Welcome to a Healing Peace Podcast. My name is Kimir Baker. I am an overcomer. I am very passionate about helping others to achieve an abundant life fueled by spiritual principles and emotional balance. In this podcast series, we delve into spiritual self-care. Yes, we will explore exercising our minds and bodies, but more importantly, we will discuss strengthening our inner being, embracing God's love, and being filled by the fullness of God. As you take this journey with us, we want to inspire possessing your authentic selves and happiness. Hello, family. This is our infamous tools and tips show. Before I begin, I want to acknowledge this difficult season. Every time we turn on the news, there's a new challenge thrown at us. 2020 has been an unprecedented year. Despite the uncertainty and disarray, we are still committed to bringing great content to strengthen and encourage your spirits. At some point, we've all had challenges thrown at us that require us to dig deep to push forward, but not only to push forward, but to heal. This truth is evident in the previous two episodes where I interviewed a friend about overcoming disappointments and a difficult time in her life. I don't know about you, but that interview was packed with great information. There were so many great lessons in what she shared. Before I jump into the tools and tips, I want to delve into a little bit more about staying in the race. In episode 29, Faith Over Fear, I spoke about the runner who runs in the opposite direction. Usually, fear is involved. But I want to take a moment and think about other situations in our lives that may force us to run in the opposite direction. How about feeling inadequate? You may think to yourself that you don't belong on this path. I don't have the strength or the endurance to complete the race. In fact, I cannot endure the pain to continue. Or maybe you may think, I'm not worthy to even be in this race. Everyone else has been training much longer than me. I do not belong here. Or maybe you're on the other extreme. I am better than everyone else that is here. They are beneath me. I need to find another race that suits my talents. Okay, what about this one? I do not feel loved or believed in. No one cares If I finish anyways, I do not have anyone in the stands cheering me on. I do not want to do this by myself. Here's another one. Maybe the other runners are extremely competitive. The one next to me, in fact, is so competitive, they keep pushing me, pushing me out of my lane. I'm tired of being elbowed, savage tired and treated poorly. I too have every right to be in this race. I trained just as hard. Here's another one. You witness a fellow runner fall and twist her ankle. You think to yourself, I don't want to chance it. I'm not trying to fall. I want to keep all my limbs. Let me get out now. Well, I still have all my body parts. Finally, I did not win before. So why do I need to be on this race again? Why do I even need to try? I believe 
that at some point we may have concluded several of these items for ourselves. We may think that we are unworthy, unloved. We may feel overwhelmed by our disappointments or we see others' pain and and do not want to try it ourselves. Or flat out, we just have enemies who attempt to block everything that we do. It becomes one roadblock after another. Most of these experiences, if not all, are addressed in the meditation scriptures that I discussed in episode 10 and 17. As I reflect on the previous episodes and the scriptures, I'm reminded that God knows the obstacles that we face in our journeys. He knows our challenges, fears, and disappointments. Thus, one area that he attempts to bring us comfort is through his word. Go back and listen to those episodes to be reminded. Remember that you are skillfully made, perfect in beauty, loved every day, and defended by God so that your enemies fall. What incredible truths. And as I was reflecting over the things that have occurred over the past couple of weeks, months, I was blown away by how before God was prepping us for this season by having us look at these scriptures and talk about how to infuse them in our spirits so that we can conquer the challenges that are here now. It was as if I was putting together a puzzle and now the pieces are forming together and this beautiful picture has come together. And in this picture, God is saying that I'm with you, that I love you, and we're gonna get through this together. And I want you to be reminded of this. And not only remind it, but I'm preparing you for this season. I'm so amazed at God's heart and character for us. He is that trainer who gets down dirty with us and teaches us how to respond accordingly, lovingly, righteously. He gets down with us and mends our broken leg. And he says, you can keep going. Stay in the race. I am here. Look at me. How incredible, how powerful is he? Okay, I got a little excited talking about my dad. And it now leads us to our tools and tips. Tip Number one, fears are hidden, but also becomes idols as we are so consumed by what we fear that we alter our lives. We stop living the life that God wants for us. Therefore, tip number one is to identify areas of your life where you alter your course due to fears. Jot down the outcome. Take special notice to if the fear or what you thought was gonna happen actually happened. As you jot down those things, also write down what did you give up due to that fear? I'm gonna give you an example so you know that you're not the only one. Okay. If you know me by now, you know, well, you may not know. But anyways, I am maturing in age. For a long time, I dealt with the fear of being alone. I'm not married. I don't have kids. I don't have anyone here trying to talk all those sweet nothings to me. 
And in that, I easily became consumed by the idea of not being alone. The outcome of this fear is that I had so many, and I was stressed many, unhealthy relationships. One bad relationship after another. I thought to myself, well, at least I have someone and it's better than being alone. Due to this understanding, I stopped living my happy life. Why? I was caught up in mess. However, when I finally said no more, I will take a stand for me. Then out with the bad. Then the new game in. Mm, how refreshing. I'll be honest. It did take a moment for the new to enter my life. But during that waiting period, I did not die because I was alone. I sure didn't. And how do we know this? Because I'm talking to you. Yes. Tip number two. God chips away our fears to expose them. So we place our trust in him and we surrender to him. Jot down a list of your current fears and then jot down what does trusting in God look like instead of that fear. Okay, give you another example. Another example. I had a fear I was going to lose my job. Due to that fear, I began to save more money and I picked up more tasks in the office to prove myself as a valuable employee. During that season, I had to transition from being fearful about my job to accepting and understanding and receiving that God will provide for my financial needs as well as give me a new job if I need it. He can do that. Give me a new job. Yes, he can. Therefore, I had to trust him. I had to fight to channel my thoughts. I prayed more. I recited scripture. In fact, every time I thought about losing my job, I was like, okay, the Lord will meet my need. He loves me. He will take care of me. Thank you, Jesus. But another thing that I did was I had to start writing down those little things of God meeting my needs. Even if it meant that someone brought me lunch that day, I jotted it down because it identified that God was with me and he saw and that he was providing. Tip number three. Patty discussed how she had to not allow herself to mentally think the what ifs about anything, rather big or small. This trip tip is true and necessary. Being consumed by what ifs elevates our emotions to panic instead of trusting in God. So check that what if. Instead of thinking what if, think God will. Thank you very much. Tip number four. Find a safe community to share your experiences so that you're receiving help to push through your emotions and fears. This safe community should not make you more fearful. Instead, they're there to guide you back to putting your trust in God. Tip number five. Now we all know, sometimes that safe community does not have the tools to guide you through your emotions and fear. Sometimes you need to hear more than just pray it out. Sometimes you just need to know you're not the only one, but you need more than that little piece of information. It's helpful, but you need more. During that time, it's okay to know that not everyone is equipped to give you the complete help that you need. So if your community is not giving you the support that you need, go find a counselor. In your relationship with your counselor, 
The objective is to get to the root of your fears, to stop faulty patterns of thinking. In episode four of this series, A New You, I asked a social worker, how do we find the right counselors? Feel free to go back and take a listen and jot down how to find the right one. Tip number six, think of others in a healthy way instead of your fears. Perhaps calling a friend in need or even volunteer. We still have plenty of volunteer opportunities. Tip number seven, establish a prayer routine. For Patty, she changed how she prayed to allow for a deeper intimacy with God. Also, when she did not have the energy to pray, sometimes you say, hey, like, I didn't feel like it completely. Like, I was just hurt so bad. She stated, want to want it and allow God to work with it. Thus, allow God to work with your desire to pray. But you got to have that desire. Tip number eight. Allow God to extend grace to you during difficult times, difficult moments. This is so hard to do. Why? Because we beat ourselves up. Yes, we do. We think, oh, I shouldn't be thinking this way. Oh, man, I shouldn't be feeling this way. Man, that was stupid for me to do this. The list goes on. Yes, it does. But we have to trust that no matter what, God will give us the grace at that moment to get us through it. I love that one. Tip number nine. God molds us during hardships. Jot down a previous difficult situation, then identify what you learned and how you grew from the situation. For Patty, she developed deeper faith, compassion, and forgiveness. It just skyrocketed. She already had those elements, but it deepened. And she was softer to be able to understand individuals in different circumstances. Yes, God was in the mode in business. Tip number 10, which is very important. Even though God molds us during hardships, he does not tempt us. I was so glad she shared that. Temptation relates to our evil desires, and God does not tempt us with evil. That's James 1, 13. Thank you for listening to all these wonderful tools and tips. As I stated previously, as I give all this wonderful information, pick a couple of items to work on and make progress in. And when you do, you'll be amazed at what you become and the stronger person that's in you fighting and doing all this greatness. We're going to have a good time next week. Come back. We still have great information to share. We're still on our encouraging journey. We're still inspired. We're still strengthening. Come back next week, Tuesday.